Hi, this is Gary Rubenstein, and this is the eighth and final part of this uh, lecture series about the cubic and quartic equations. Uh, just to put things in historical context, the quadratic formula had been around for thousands of years, maybe 4,000 BC, uh, ancient uh, Babylon. The depressed cubic wasn't discovered uh, until 1515, someone named Del Ferro. He didn't share how he did it. Um, and eventually someone named Tartaglia had to rediscover it in about uh, 1540. Anyway, um, eventually it got passed on to Cardano, who published a book in 1545 where he not only uh, revealed how to do the depressed cubic, but also the trick for turning general cubics into depressed cubics, and his student Ferrari came up with the trick for turning quartics into depressed quartics and then solving those by the method I showed in the last tutorial. Um, I think one of the um, main offshoots of the cubic formula has to do with imaginary numbers. Now as high school teachers we often tell students that they had to invent imaginary numbers because they very much were interested in the solution to this equation. And that's actually not true. They, they were not terribly interested in the solution to, to that equation. They would just say that has no answer. Um, what they were interested in, though, was the solution to a cubic equation. Here's a depressed cubic. And this depressed cubic equation has a solution of x equals 4. You can test that for yourself. 4 cubed is 64. 15 times 4 is 64. 60 plus 4 is 64, which is fine. But when you run this through the depressed cubic equation, it becomes this. The cube root of 2 plus the square root of negative 121 plus the cube root of 2 minus the square root of negative 121. Now this was a problem because they knew that the answer was 4, and somehow this sort of monstrous number with negative square roots might be equal to 4. Turns out that it is. But back then, they got around this by saying you, you can't use the formula for this. You can only use the formula if um, they, they said right in the formula that if um, a the cube of one third of the coefficient, cu the cube of one third of the coefficient is less than the square of half the constant. And in this case, the square of half the constant is 4 over 2 squared, which is 4. And the cube of a third of the coefficient was 125. So they would say, in this one, you wouldn't really be able to use the formula. But actually, you can use the formula. And Cardano missed a great opportunity here to discover imaginary numbers. He'd come pretty close to it. It was a few years later, maybe 15, 10 or 15 years later, that someone named Bombelli had an idea. And I'm not sure how he did this, but maybe by some sort of trial and error, he realized that if you do 2 plus the square root of negative 1 and you cube it, you will get this. And this is suspending uh, disbelief and allowing yourself to say the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 equals negative 1. Well, it turns out that 2 minus the square root of negative 1, if you cube it, you'll get, you'll get this thing. And by the way, that first one becomes this here. So if we're allowed to do that, then this x actually becomes 2 plus the square root of negative 1 plus 2 minus the square root of negative 1. And conveniently, those square root of negative 1s cancel out and you end up with 4, which is the original answer to the question. So imaginary numbers were studied and basically invented, not in an attempt to solve the equation x squared plus 1 equals 0. They had real no interest in that. Um, they hardly had interest in equations like x squared 
plus 5x, or sorry, plus plus 5x plus 6, our most one of our easiest equations we, we do today, they weren't even interested in that because the answers were both negative. So they didn't even care so much about the answer to this one because it had negative answers. So they certainly didn't care the answer for this one with imaginary answers. But again, they were very interested in how to use a depressed cubic equation when something like this occurs. And that really inspired the studying of imaginary numbers, the thought that maybe square root of negative 1 squared can equal negative 1, and sort of following that consequence to this uh, result. So, well, that's going to conclude this eight-part tutorial, tutorial series on uh, cubic and quadratic equations. I hope you liked it. If you did, you can make some comments on this uh, YouTube page and let me know what you think. And I'm hoping to uh, create a bunch more in the future. Thanks a lot for watching.